draw a square, connect these two corners, and call this angle theta 1. Beside this square, draw another square, connect these two corners, and call this angle theta 2. Draw a third square, and call this angle theta 3. Continue this pattern to draw theta 4, and theta 5, and so on and so forth. If we were to add up all of the angles theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, so on and so forth, what is the total sum of these angles? Pause this video if you'd like to try it out for yourself, and when you're ready, unpause for the solution. We're first going to make some space and consider the first angle. The side opposite theta 1 has length 1, and the side adjacent to theta 1 has length 1. This tells us that theta 1 really is the arctangent of 1 divided by 1. For the angle theta 2, the adjacent is not just one unit, but two units. This means that theta 2 is the arctangent of 1 over 2. For theta 3, the adjacent has length 3, and therefore theta 3 equals the arctangent of 1 over 3. We can repeat this process and still ask the question, what is the sum of the infinitely many arctangents? Surprisingly, the sum of the first three arctangents equals pi over 2, or 90 degrees. You can see why this is the case in the video in the video card. But here, we are interested in finding the sum of the infinitely many arctangents. Perhaps graphing the function might be helpful for our purposes. Let's first draw the graph of the tangent function. We can also draw the graph of y equals to x. The reason for this is that y equals the arctangent of x is equivalent to saying that x equals the tangent of y. Notice that the x and the y change spots which means that the graph of the arctangent can be obtained by taking the graph of the tangent and flipping that over the graph of y equals to x. Now, if we were to calculate the arctangent of 1, we're going to get 45 degrees, also known as pi over 4 radians. If we connected the origin with this particular point using a straight line, this line would have y-intercept 0 and gradient pi over 4, which means it has the equation y equals to pi over 4 times x. This means that the arctangent of x is not less than pi over 4 times 1. However, if we now decrease the input to consider the arctangent of a half, since the curve lies above the line, the arctangent of a half is not less than pi over 4 times a half. For a rigorous justification as to why this is the case, check out the document in the description box below. Likewise, for the input 1 over 3, arctangent of 1 over 3 is not less than pi over 4 times 1 over 3. We can repeat this process and see that the arctangent of 1 over n is not less than pi over 4 times 1 over n. This means that we can lower bound the sum of the arctangents with the sum pi over 4 times 1 plus a half plus a third, so on and so forth. But that raises the question, what does this sum actually equal? Pause the video if you'd like to try it out for yourself, and when you're ready, unpause for the solution. We're going to switch gears and draw a different graph. In this graph, we're going to consider the terms 1, a half, 1 third, and so on and so forth. The term 1 could be thought of as representing the area of a rectangle with base 1 and height 1. We can therefore draw the rectangle as follows. Similarly, the term a half could be thought of as representing the area of a rectangle with base 1 and height a half. Likewise with a third, a fourth, so on and so forth. On the other hand, we can consider the graph of y equals to 1 over x. And we can consider the area under this graph. What this picture really then tells us 
is that if we take one plus a half plus a third, so on and so forth, we obtain the area of the rectangles, which is not lesser than the area under the graph, which is represented by this integral. This integral has an infinity symbol at the top. And what this really means is taking the limit of the integral as r approaches infinity. We can therefore calculate this integral. And since the derivative of the logarithm is 1 over x, the integral of 1 over x is the logarithm of x. What this symbol means is that we plug in x equals to r, subtracted by the expression where we plug in x equals to 1. But the logarithm of 1 is 0, which leaves us with the limit of the logarithm of r. If you're wondering why this is the case, check out the video on the laws of exponents in the video card. We can use this expression to motivate the sketch of yet another graph. This time, we're going to sketch the graph of the logarithm of x. For a recap of why this graph has this shape, check out the video on high school functions in the video card. Consider the output value m and the corresponding input value the exponential of m. The green portion represents the fact that the logarithm is greater than m. Furthermore, no matter how large we let m be, we can always find the input, the exponential of m, so that the logarithm is still greater than m. Since this is true, no matter how large m is, we can conclude that the logarithm of r actually approaches infinity as r approaches infinity. This tells us that the sum 1 plus a half plus a third is not less than infinity. But this means that this sum equals infinity. But this now helps us answer the original question involving the sum of an infinite number of angles. We've already seen that this sum equals the sum of the arctangents. But the sum of the arctangents is not less than infinity. This tells us that the sum of the angles is not less than infinity as well. In other words, if we were to draw a bunch of squares, connect the corners and calculate the angles, then add up all of these angles, the sum of these angles would be infinite. But if you're curious to find out what's the sum of just three of these angles, which turns out to be a really nice answer, click on the video here.